So, last night I had a chat with a couple, black couple, and one thing that came up was the fact that the wife, who has three kids, two different fathers, feels that she's missing out on life because she has to be the housewife. The husband wants her to stay at home, take care of the kids. Now she has young kids. She don't have any trust in babysitters, but yet she feels that she's been overworked at home. The husband's gone overseas because he makes a lot more money from these overseas jobs. Wife is complaining, she's lonely. She's been going out lately to some bars, getting drunk. Problems in the marriage. So they asked me to mediate. Now here's the thing, I am not a therapist. I'm a guy that's just gonna listen to both sides and I'm gonna evaluate where I see the problems. Now one thing about having conversations with couples is that as a man, who's mediating, the woman will always feel that I'm taking the side of the man if I do not agree with her. You can see how this works, ladies. What that shows you is that we are in an age where women cannot just deal with the fact that maybe it's my fault. So I am caught in between the middle of, hey, I don't want to alienate her, but when I see something that is blatantly her fault, I have to tread this very gentle line between having her totally disconnect from the conversation, which would literally just ruin why we're here in the first place, and use terms and expressions that make her feel that she is, that she is not the problem. You see where this is a problem, ladies? Do you know today, you know that in today's day and age, we are faced with a problem when it comes to therapy. We're faced with this problem that we men, whenever we go to therapy, that we should be going under the conditions that we must think more like women. Think about that for a second. And you know what? The best way to explain this is to listen to this little piece of this podcast and you can hear uh, Mr. Rolo Tomasi express it very well. Like that's what I'm talking about, right? You have, as a man, you have a, there's a period in your life if you want to date multiple women, you can. And there's a period of life if you want to settle down, you can. And you shouldn't be guilted for not wanting to do one thing or the other. Right. So what I found is that therapy tends to be more like it, for every instance that I've heard of, it tends to be more like the feminization of men. And so that's the reason why I think a lot of men are complaining. What do you think, Rob? Okay, so here's my deal. The, the pro just to tag on what he was saying is that the way we do psychology right now, the way we do therapy is all... Uh, it begins and ends from the female experience. The reason why guys are supposed to go to therapy in the first place is to get in touch with their feelings and to be more vulnerable. And to, I mean, we can run down this laundry list of like, this is what you ought to do. And all of that, at the bottom of that list, it's, it, they, the equation reads out to be more like a woman. That's what it, what it comes to. Uh, emote like a woman, talk like a woman, communicate like a woman, experience life like a woman, everything else goes along. And the problem we have with this is because we, we don't understand today that men and women are different. And we are fundamentally, biologically, uh, neurologically, endocrinology, all every, in so many different ways, right down to the the cellular level. Men and women are different. Our brains are, and I can show you the fMRI studies of these. Our brains are literally wired differently. So just because he didn't cry at the end of Titanic doesn't mean he's emotionally fucking stunted. Okay, he might he might cry at the end of Saving Private Ryan, but he's not going <laughs> yeah, like, to. He's not going to cry when Rose drops the fucking heart of the sea well, down to the bottom because it was ocean, stupid she right? could have let there you go so when women go to their these therapists 95 percent of them are females by the way this is where the problem come in and they're being told that hey you're not the problem he's not just emotional enough he's not this enough it's his fault even though they don't say it directly they're always telling the man oh you got to emote you have to be you have to understand her feelings Therapists are literally trying to make men be more like women. I am not in that game. I'm not a freaking therapist. So I'm going to tell women who come to me, and I'm telling you ladies, when you come to me, I'm going to look at both sides. And if you are the problem, I'm going to say, hey, I see you the problem. If the man's the problem, I'm going to say, hey, you're the problem, dude. Get your shit together. But she made an expression which was more along the lines as, oh, 
I don't know if because both of you are Caribbean men that you all think the same. There is that little hint of shaming. You both are against me. And so ladies, I want you to understand one very simple thing. When you go to a, th a male therapist, or when you come to me for any type of feedback, try to understand, I'm gonna give you the cold hard facts. Don't ever think that I'm gonna be nice to you because you're a woman and that's what you're used to hearing. I'm gonna give you the cold hard facts. If you want to feel good about yourself, don't come to me. Gentlemen, if you think you're gonna come to a man who's gonna agree with you because yeah, we're men. No, I'm gonna tell you, you gotta get your together, man up, treat her like a woman, treat her with respect and dignity, and don't expect her to be a doormat. Man up, be a man, be a real man. So guys, understand. So when you come to the older man for any sort of mediation or anything to do with helping you out, you guys got to realize you're going to be in for some tough love. That's all I can do. I don't care about being politically correct. I'm going to give it to you cold and hard. Medicine don't taste good. But you know what? It cures your ass. I hope you understand this. And that brings us... Holy me. I'm a f therapist. How much should a guy earn for you to date him? 500k! Close to a million! If he doesn't, I'm not gonna say yes! Do you hear me? How much should a guy pay for engagement ring? He needs to pay again! 500! He gets paid every year 500! He saves that towards the ring! If he doesn't, he's gonna get a no and it's gonna be embarrassing! What car do you want a guy to drive to pick you up? I want a Mercedes. It must be black. Black. And it must be... Oh, what's it called? A QV benefit of dating you. The benefit of dating me is you're always going to have a fucking good time. My friends, if you want to come out with me, you're going to have a good time. What do you do for a living? I'm a therapist. So guys, before I continue into this, please subscribe if you haven't yet already. And if you like a cold, hard dose of good information, and some knowledge for today's retarded world. Thank you for joining me here, okay? Give me a thumbs up. Let the algorithm know that this information needs to be shared with more and more people so that we can all grow as a society and as a community. And of course, remember, if you guys just want me to answer a quick question, go over to Instagram, hit me up over there, same title, Ask an Older Man, send me a voice message, tell me what the problem is, and I can give you a quick feedback. Hey, if you're into the texting, that's great. I'll read it, but I'm going to send you back a voice message because I don't have time for the typing. But if you need a full-on session, you need to get a lot off your chest. If you need a mentoring, go to askanolderman.com and then you can book a session there with me. Very inexpensive. Trust me, guys, I'm trying to help more people rather than just help the elite, sort of the ones that can afford a big fee. Go over there and book a session. I'm actually hoarse today because over the weekend, I did eight hours of continuous talking to people. Plus a lecture, I had to do a lecture as well, but man. <clears throat> so if I hear, if I sound a little hoarse today, that's what it is, okay? So because of this conversation last night, I, I remembered this one video of this mother who's trying to, trying to dump her kids off on her grandmother or her mother because she don't want it anymore. She don't want the responsibility. So this seems to be some common trait. Let's let's just take a look at the video. Hey babies, wait, don't don't go in the house yet. Why not? Hey listen, go on to the just go sit on the porch. Hey listen, what do you think you're doing? I'm dropping them off. For good. Listen, I made a younger guy. Oh he don't want no God. kids. And he don't want to, listen, he don't want to deal with them. And so I'm dropping these kids off so me and him can live our life. We want to travel. We want to explore the world. And I can't do that with kids. Oh I can't. I cannot believe. It's time for me to be happy. And I just want to be happy and stress-free without these children. That's all I want. Then you should ask me 
Baby. I shouldn't have asked. You're a good grandparent. It's respect, Angel. It's respect. Well, I hope that you respect my decision on moving on with my life with my new man and no kids. I'm not raising your kids. Well, I'm not either. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you because I'm not doing it. I'm just letting you know right now I'm not doing it. These are good for three kids. I'm tired. I'm tired of being a single parent. I'm tired. But hey, babies. Wait, don't, don't go in the house. You know, I got the basic feedback from the lady last night. No, listen, she didn't say I want to give up my kids, but she started talking about, I want the opportunity to advance my career. I didn't have choices and my husband didn't give me the choice. Think about this. You got three kids and all you're thinking about is my career. I didn't get an opportunity to enhance my career. The idea that you're career is at the forefront and it's not even a career it's literally a real estate business but the idea that your career is at the forefront of your mind not your kids you're tired you're tired of taking care of the kids because your husband is overseas working and he is sending the money to provide for you to take care of both your kids one from a previous marriage and his two but you are not happy, you're frustrated. You feel that you're a single mother at this point, even though you know what the husband is doing. You don't have another job. You don't have to go out and work. Your job is to take care of the kids. What about the fact that women want to work? I mean, they should have the right, don't you think? Most women want to have a career. Well, I don't believe that's true. You're telling me what you've been told and what you've been told to believe, not what you actually believe and not what's actually the case. No, I don't believe for a second that most women want to work and most women want to have a career. That's PR. That's propaganda. Honestly, did you think that most women want to work and also say that uh, women have equal intelligence as men? Because if they have equal intelligence as men, what intelligent person would choose to work if they had a choice not to? I know a man wouldn't if given the choice. I know that most women don't want to work. I don't need to see the statistics because I work. So I know what it's like. No, you can only only convince a woman or anyone else that it's wonderful it's just so fulfilling to dress up in business clothes and go to an office all day if they've never worked you can maybe sell that message to young inexperienced people but anyone who has been in the workforce for any length of time will tell you it is not exactly living the dream so you're thinking about leaving this man that's taking care of all of this for you to be what single again so now, I, I want you to try to think of this logic, guys, because you clearly see that she's being unreasonable. Men have had to sacrifice and move overseas and do whatever job it is to take care of his family. That, that goes on every day. I have, I have a nanny that's been working with me for 16 years from the Philippines. She has eight kids, eight kids. Her last one, she rarely sees. She probably sees it once every three years. All of her interaction is on Zoom. Her husband stays home and takes care of those kids. But for 15 years, she's been an overseas worker, sending money back home so that her husband can take care of her kids. 15 years. This woman has only been at it for six months and she's complaining She's frustrated and she's lonely and she feels like a single mother and she can't handle it in her career and heard this and heard that and I'm not happy, I'm not happy and he's not gone and he don't make me involved, he don't want me as a partner, blah, 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 blah. So when I call her out and I said, listen, you haven't said anything about being a mother. You, you, you realize that all you're talking about is what you feel that you're missing as opportunities in your career. Do, do you realize, I, I said, I call her out, I said, do you realize that? And she said, oh, no, no, I love my kids and I would never give up my kids. Of, of course you won't. But the point is, you don't consider yourself mother first. This is where the problem is, especially in the black community, because you all have fell for this bullshit that you need your careers. Your career is what's going to fulfill you. Well, I can tell you, ladies, that's bullshit. Because being a real estate agent is not a career. And the fact, if you have a couple of young kids, why can't you say, all right, you know what? There's my young ones. For the next two years, I'm going to be the best mother ever. 
have those and, and, and make sure that my kids grow to a point where they're a little older, then I can bring in a nanny. In the meantime, while they're sleeping, while they're doing their thing, I could still sort of move a little bit of real estate on the side. When they get bigger, then I can get more and more into it. I can do a lot of my stuff online, etc., etc., etc. Oh, I'm tired, I'm tired as the kids, I'm tired. This is where we're at, my friends, where women are no longer looking at being mothers. They want to be men. And when I pull this out, and when I approach her with this perspective, of course she's denying it. The husband is on the side saying, I'm doing everything for you. But she wants a partnership. But she wants this partnership. She wants them to build a business together. Now they tried that in the past, it didn't work. The husband clearly sees that she is not business minded for them to do a partnership together. So he took the other route. He decided, listen, I need to do whatever it takes to take care of my family. I need to go overseas. It's three to four times more money than I would make in the, in the US. That's what he's done. But she don't appreciate that. She accused the man of being controlling. He wants control. And I asked her, I said, don't you want a man who leads your family? Yeah, I do. I said, well, when he lead, let the freaking man lead. I don't understand why women want a man to lead, but then when the man is leading, they feel that they're left out and they're not partners. A leader is someone in the freaking front. There's no partnership when it comes to leadership. There's a helpmate. And I'm hoping I'm getting true to a lot of my black sisters because this is vital information for you. You have to understand that the man and the woman have a different role. If both of you are trying to do the same role, if you're trying to do the same role as your husband and you have kids, guess who's going to suffer? Yeah, the kids. Because now they grow up with two dads, not a nurturing mother and a provider dad. We got two dads in the house. Just that one has a vagina, one has a penis. And I've never seen that work well. Never. So ladies, understand that once kids are in the mix, life isn't about you anymore. Life then becomes about your kids. It's as simple as that. I can't say it any other, any other way. Let me read a few comments on this woman who wants to give up her kids to her mother, then we lock it off. Of course, a woman shouts out, why can't she be tired? We're hell for everything, yet we get away with it all. We can be tired. She's dropping them off in a safe space. The reason is dumb though. You imagine if your mother said, I'm tired of you. I want to get rid of you. Go to your grandmother. I don't want you. Imagine a child understanding and knowing that. I don't know, what, what kind of mothers do we have today? You ladies put less thought into bringing a child into this world than you put into buying a freaking Chanel bag. It's unreal. And yeah, you guys gonna come at me, oh, you're bashing women again, bashing women. No, I'm trying to wake you all up and realize that there is a problem. If you don't see this as a problem, you're the problem. This lady said, Jenaha says, respectfully, respectfully, who gives a F if she's tired? She laid down an F for them. Nobody but her and the man she made them with. That's it. Be grown and handle your grown up business. 100, 100, 100, 100. Yeah, exactly. JS said, but she'll have another one with her new man. LOL. You all really special. Laughing my ass off. That's exactly what's going to happen. That new man, he'll breed her and she'll be just as irresponsible. Make it make sense. We are living in crazy ass times, man. Hawk76 says, women like you are part of the reason what's wrong with our community. For sure. Lucky Lucci 23 said, if she's tired, she should take them to their father. But I'm willing to bet she has burnt that bridge and it's and too proud to go to him. The level of entitlement to simply take your kids to someone else to raise for good is mind blowing. Do you think the world works that way? No, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way at all. Ari Gold said, we all tired as parents. Find 20 minutes, regroup, and get back to being a parent. Them kids ain't asked to be here. I hate deadbeat parents. 
Yeah. Rick Remake said, you don't even realize how stupid your mindset and logic is. That's the crazy part. Aaron, gentleman said, being tired and needing a break is fine. Dropping them off at her parents unannounced for her to raise them because her new fella doesn't want them is effing pathetic. Get a grip. Yeah. Time Gaming said, who's going to tackle these deadbeat moms? Yeah. 3,074 likes. This is the thing. We don't talk about deadbeat moms. That's not even a term. But of course we talk about deadbeat dads. We need to start talking about deadbeat moms, irresponsible women. KKK Jem Manny says, you don't value your kids, but you value a stranger. Shame on you. And that's why I think we should bring shame back. This is why I do these videos because when females mess up, we tend to not shame them enough because feminism has taught us that we shouldn't do that. We've made shame an insult. And I don't mean the act of shaming. I'm, and I'm not talking about shaming the person. I'm talking about the actual act of shaming the person. We've made that an insult. And shaming works. But shaming is an effective tool to use to punish another individual when the act or the, the bad act isn't as harsh as the criminal act. But it's not good for society. We got to bring shaming back. Anyway, guys, I don't want to make this a long one. If you reached this far, give me a thumbs up on the video. Let me know your thoughts. Let's have a discussion. But I just thought I'd share this with you guys because I'm seeing too much of it. Too much. Okay? So remember, always remember, whenever in doubt, always ask an older man. Cheers.